Welcome to A Look Ahead. We're delighted you've decided to join us. We study the Sabbath School lessons as prepared by the Seventh-day Adventist Church. And this series is entitled, Rest in Christ. What all would that include? Well, this is lesson number nine in that series entitled, The Rhythms of Rest. Rhythms of Rest? I know about rhythms of music. Rhythms of Rest? Well, this is the lesson for August 28th of 2021. And as usual, we'd like to begin with a word of prayer. Our Father, we have come together to discuss another aspect of your great work. We thank you for the Seventh-day Sabbath and all that it means to us and what it has meant to our church as a, as a whole. Help us to understand it better today because of our study together be with those who listen in, that they may be inspired also as our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Certainly any study of rest in Christ should make Seventh-day Adventists immediately think of the Sabbath. Try to imagine yourself watching the events of Creation Week. I have a good friend who unfortunately has passed now, but he said, you know, I believe that when it comes time for God to remake planet Earth, he will probably do it the way he did the first time. Day one, day two, and I hope he does. Or at least that we get to see the sequence in the panorama. See how it was all done, exactly each individual step. Well, what we know is that they, he created the weak uh, light, firmament, otherwise known as the sky, trees and land, birds and fish, and animals. But not one single human being had yet been created. God was waiting for the grand finale, and he created humans as a unique order of beings. And here's an interesting quotation from Ellen White. All heaven took a deep and joyful interest in the creation of the world and of man. Human beings were a new and distinct order. They were made in the image of God, and it was the Creator's design that they should populate the earth. They were to live in close communion with heaven, receiving power from the source of all power, updated by God. They were to live, I'm sorry, upheld by God. They were to live sinless lives. Review and Herald, February 11, 1902. Try to imagine God himself coming down to this little tiny planet almost a nothing in, 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 in terms of the universe, scooping up some clay or mud and beginning to form a man. Then God bent over and kissed Adam with the breath of life. What do you think the angels were thinking as they watched that spectacle? Well, only a what, why do you think God started with a man instead of a woman? That's a good question. <laughs> Maybe he had some idea what was coming. The sexist view of things is what, what most of us take. It's a, and the patriarchal system was certainly dominant in our world for most of it, most of generations. So maybe that's why, but that's a good question. You of course probably know the story about someone who was wa quote, watching creation and God made Adam and he took one look at him and he said, I can do better than that. <laughs> <laughs> and he made Eve. <laughs> and he made Eve. <laughs> well, I mean. well, only a short time later, after having reviewed all the animals and giving them their names or probably categorizing them some, somehow, Adam was put to sleep. A rib was taken from his side and Eve was created. God looked upon his work and said it was very good. But God had not finished creating. It was then time to create a memorial. And God did not make a memorial out of stone. Think of every memorial thing that you've ever seen. What's it made out of? Yeah, stone, or bricks, stone or brick, wood, concrete. concrete, you know, a few made out of marble or something, which of course is a kind of stone. Um, God could have made it out of precious gems. He could have made it out of gold. But he made a memorial out of time, 
a memorial out of time. I want to go a little bit into what yeah. Gordon had just said. You know, when you think God created man, but he knew that he was going to create woman. Yeah. Because of the way man is built. You see, I mean, uh, cannot give him the reproductive system. Why? Yeah. Right? But then you think, he also says men have, uh, this is going to genetics, X and Y chromosomes. Mm -hmm. Women have XX. X and X. A woman cannot give birth to a, a, a man without. Yeah. But you see, man has both man X and, and Y. And X and Y. The ladies have X and X. But I think his intention was beyond the modern, whatever way of looking at humanity. It says, and they shall be one flesh. Mm -hmm. We're going to touch what? And Adam knew it right away. Mm -hmm. It's my body, my bone, my flesh. How beautiful. Yeah. Adam saw all these animals with male and female. People are living. And where's, where's mine? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Where's my friend? Where's my friend? Yep. Well, why do you think God chose to do things that way? No one can change it, although some have tried. One cannot deface it, God's memorial. One cannot enlarge it or diminish it. One may think that she or he can do that, but she or he cannot. And it belongs equally to all human beings living on this earth. More than that, God created two beings to represent himself, not just one. Speaking to your point, Charles, a male and a female who should be united in holy marriage, thus creating a unit to be like God. Now, this is interesting. God knew what was coming, but he, what if he had not made us with the ability to procreate? He would have had to have done like he did with the angels if he wanted a lot of them. Mm -hmm. But when you go on to create man, he says, just makes two of them. Yeah, but so the point is, if he had not given us the ability to procreate and they had sinned, there we would be stuck. I mean, is he going to have go on forever with two sinners living in an empty world? Well, conservative Christians believe that God has omniscience. He is all-knowing. He has the ability not only to know, he has the ability not only to know everything, but also to know the future as distinctly as he knows the past. What was God thinking as he created Adam and Eve, realizing what was coming? Remember that Revelation 12 makes it very clear that Satan was already on this earth. He had already caused rebellion in heaven and had been thrown out after war developed. And then he was present on this earth trying to find any means he could to disrupt God's plan. So, I mean, here he is. You, 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 you know, how many of us have watched children and some child really struggles and he's very careful and he builds up a pile of blocks or something like that and the younger brother or sister comes on and whap, you know? This is, this is Satan, you know? What did God think, I'm sorry, what did Adam think when he woke up from that deep sleep? Try to imagine his thoughts as he saw his new bride. And what did she think of him? Well, here's the words that we have describing that event. Then the Lord God took some soil from the ground and formed a man out of it. He breathed life-giving breath into his nostrils. That was that kiss we talked about and the man began to live. Then the Lord God made the man fall into a deep sleep. And while he was sleeping, he took out one of man, the man's ribs and closed up the flesh. That was what you called perfect surgery. He formed a woman. As one of my anesthesiology friends says, the first act was to put him to sleep. <laughs> That's an anesthesiologist, not a surgeon. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> How long do you suppose it took to, for God to do this whole process? There you are, it's done. <laughs> okay, he formed a woman out of that rib and brought her to him. A man said, at last, here is the one of my own kind, that one I've been looking for, Gordon. Bone taken from my bone and flesh from my flesh. Woman is her name because she was taken out of man. And in the Hebrew, it's Isha is her name because she was taken out of Ish. In, in Hebrew. That is why a man leaves his father and mother and is united with his wife 
and they become one from my Good News Bible. Someday it's going to be great to ask the Lord Himself, the Creator, what was going through your mind when yeah. you saw the way Adam reacted when you saw Eve? Yeah. Because that's the kind of relationship He wants with us. We're reasonably sure that God has never shared His procreative power with any other group in the universe. Mm. We are unique, distinct, as Ellen White said. Think how different this story is from, the, uh, from all the other explanations that have been suggested by Satan. A couple of us have recently had the privilege of visiting not only the Ark in northern Kentucky, but not far from it, the Museum of Creation, and where these issues are discussed and portrayed in various ways. Very interesting. But all the other versions of creation and so forth are a far cry, not even close, to, to, th to this story. Um, so try to imagine how different things, how different this story is from all the other explanations that have been suggested by Satan, that's where I think they all came from, working through human beings, of course, for the origins of our world and life and man. Then God made the seventh day Sabbath. What did it actually consist of? Have you ever stopped and asked yourself what the Sabbath consists of? Each day in our world's existence is composed of a single spin of the earth. Mm -hmm. There's no difference between the way the earth spins or the rate at which it spins on the Sabbath. The only thing that sets the Sabbath apart is God's special blessing on that day. Well, it's not dependent on anything celestial. Uh, the month is dependent on, the year is dependent on, Mm -hmm. But not the Sabbath cycle, not right. the seven-day cycle. It's right. very unique, you know. So, yeah. But yeah. well, you brought up the um, Creation Museum. What are you disappointed with? Um, very little have to talk about Sabbath. They talked about talk about all the other days, but yeah, yeah, not talking very little about the Sabbath. Very little. Yes. I was also disappointed both at the Ark and in the Creation Museum, although they were glorious. I enjoyed visiting them. Virtually no mention of Satan. Seventh-day Adventists, hopefully, with our view on the larger, with our larger view, the, the view about great the Great Controversy, surely would have done things, that, that part would be different. Well, each day in our world's existence is composed of a single spin of this earth. There's no difference between the way the earth spins or the rate at which it spins on the Sabbath. The only thing that sets the Sabbath apart is God's special blessing on that day. God has chosen to set the Sabbath apart for a special time of fellowship with His human children. It is interesting to note that not all of God's children are celebrating the Sabbath at one time. Those who live on opposite sides of this earth are living in different days. So God chooses to bless each group separately. The word Sabbath, as we have already studied, means rest. The Hebrew word Shabbat means rest. God was not tired, but rather He wanted to stop and celebrate what had been done. And He wanted us to stop in our daily activities at the end of six days and celebrate with Him on the Sabbath. With all the blessings that God intended to include in the Sabbath, you can be sure that Satan chose to do and continues to choose to do everything he possibly can to break up, destroy, or diminish the blessings of the Sabbath. So what impact has the corruption of the Sabbath had on the human race? Jim? Has the Sabbath been universally kept, man's thoughts and affections would have, been, would have been led to the Creator as an object of reverence and worship, and th there would never have been an idolater, an atheist, or an infidel. Ellen White, Great Controversy, page 437. Never would have been an idolater, an atheist, or an infidel. How different would our world be without if all those things were not true? Well, of course, the point is, would we all be worshiping God, the true God? I mean, that's what's implied, isn't it? Well, Moses began writing his five books of the Bible very soon after the invention of the alphabet, very soon. 
Prior to that time, writing was very complicated and was either in hieroglyphics or cuneiform, and Moses almost certainly knew how to write, to read and write both of those. But most likely, somewhere in the Egyptian realm, and people have come up with some pretty good ideas about that, people began to actually develop a kind of alphabet. As part of the royal family, Moses was there and learned that alphabet and wrote the wonderful books we now study using that primitive alphabet. Almost immediately after his return to, from Midian to lead the children of Israel out of Egypt, those 10 plagues served the purpose of convincing the children of Israel that their God was real and powerful. Do you suppose as a whole nation of slaves, they were beginning to wonder about their God? I think it was probably important for them to realize that their God was powerful, more powerful than the gods of the Egyptians, yeah. more powerful than the Pharaoh of the Egyptians. When the Israelites reached Mount Sinai, God instructed them from the top of that mountain about the rules that he wanted to be kept throughout the history of humanity. Carrie, you know about the, tell us something about one of those rules? I'm reading from Exodus chapter 20, verses 8 through 11. Observe the Sabbath and keep it holy. You have six days in which to do your work, but the seventh day is a day of rest dedicated to me. On that day no one is to work, neither you, your children, your slaves, your animals, nor the foreigners who live in your country. In six days I, the Lord, made the earth, the sky, the sea, and everything in them. But on the seventh day I rested. That is why I, the Lord, blessed the Sabbath and made it holy. That's from the Good News Bible. Okay, made it holy. What does that mean, to make something holy? It means to set it apart, set it aside. And of course, in the context of holy, it means set aside for a very special purpose. So, yeah. I still like that first word in King James Version for this commandment, remember. Yes, we're gonna talk about that. So the it, Sabbath. It's also interesting that the Exodus says, you know, six days you shall work, but what did Adam do? He worked one day, or he part of one day, and then it was a Sabbath. The tiny little bit of one day. Right. Yeah. Part of one that day. That was not fair, right? It was not well, just. Yeah. <laughs> he got the dessert first. <laughs> but the, 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 point, the, the point is, this is a celebration for God's work, Amen. not our work. That's right. So the Sabbath is intended to be a memorial each week to remind us of where we came from. So if you had to choose, which would you rather be? One, a child of the God of the universe, especially blessed by them each Sabbath day, or two, having descended from random parts of slime or ooze at the bottom of the ocean. <laughs> it's also a memorial of uh, freedom. Yeah, uh, absolutely. What we get in Deuteronomy, so again, God, everything is based upon freedom. Mm -hmm. Without without freedom, you do not have love. Yeah. But God knew what was coming. He had prepared for the entrance of sin, and so down through the centuries, He attached additional meanings to the Sabbath. Notice, He attached additional meanings to the Sabbath. Charles? And since the Sabbath is a memorial of the work of creation, it is a token of the love and power of Christ. Ellen White, Desire of Ages, 281, paragraph 3. Is it reasonable for God to ask us to dedicate <coughs> one-seventh of our time as a day of rest and fellowship with Him? Isn't that a pretty big price, pretty big cost? Well, we're supposed to give a tenth of our income, our increase, but a seventh of our time? Are we supposed to be or feel different on the Sabbath? If so, why? Is he, he asks for something to give us something uh, for our time? It, you know, you just stop doing whatever you're doing. Mm -hmm. It's uh, not well, that he's give, uh, asked something from you, he just stop doing, reflect. 
Yeah. Think. Well, obviously, yeah. He, he doesn't plan for us to do nothing. He plans for us to do something, just not what we're doing all week long. Okay. Um, in what ways has God asked us to celebrate with him? Should the Sabbath be regarded as the Earth's birthday? What sets birthdays apart from other days? Special. <laughs> I only once in 54 years that I've been married did I forget our anniversary. And my wife was in tears. We were on a long trip. We were with a bunch of other family members and we were doing a million things and I realized all of a sudden at the end of the day, oh, it's our birth, it's our anniversary. And she, rightly so, <laughs> burst out in tears when I finally mentioned it. So I don't forget that. Well, what's different? Is this, it's not a different day than any other day. What's special about it? Us. Well, despite the glorious beginning on that exodus and the incredible relationship God tried to establish with the children of Israel at Mount Sinai, because of their rebellion, Israel had to wander in the wilderness for 40 years while that first generation died. All during that time, they saw that pillar of cloud or by the day and pillar of fire by night hanging over the tent or tabernacle in the center of the camp, the site where God dwelt. What questions do you think the children who were born during the Exodus asked of their parents when they looked at the pillar of cloud by day and the pillar or the pillar of fire by night? How, 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 how does that get up there? What's it doing there? If it's been there their whole life, you know, it, if that's the norm. Well, even so, you want to know how it got there. Can I go up there and see it? How about the 12 stones when they crossed the Jordan River? Yeah. How about manna? All of things were manifestation of the Lord's, not power necessarily, but a relationship that He wants yeah. with us. The water, the food, the everything. Yeah, everything, yeah. really. Well, what would you have said to your children if they had asked, if you had been there, about that cloud and that pillar of fire? I mean, we don't, we're not accustomed to seeing pillars of fire. Would you be looking for the forest fire somewhere? <laughs> but even before the experience at Sinai, God had given the children of Israel reasons to celebrate the Sabbath and understand its importance. Gordon, this is quite a story here. From Exodus 16, starting with verse 14. When the dew evaporated, there was something thin and flaky on the surface of the desert. It was as delicate as frost. I'm going to interrupt there for a second. On the surface of the desert, how do you pick it up without picking up some sand? Did uh, God intend for them to get a little extra fiber in their diet? <laughs> I mean, anyway, go ahead. When the Israelites saw it, they didn't know what it was and asked each other, what is it? And so the word of mana, or he manna, in Hebrew means, what is it? So that's why they called it manna. Moses said to them, this is the food that the Lord has given you to eat. The Lord has commanded that each of you is to gather as much of it as he needs, two liters for each member of his household. I have to interrupt again for a moment. Uh, one of my mentors, really important mentor in my life, talked about his family who had a bunch of pastors in the family, father and children, or s several of them were pastors, and they knew Hebrew and Greek scholars. And one time, somehow or other, in their yard, they found this little bird that was completely nondescript. They never did figure out whether this was accidentally two different birds from different species got mixed up and so they couldn't figure out what this bird was and so what do you think they called it? Mana. Mana. <laughs> <laughs> the mana bird, huh? The mana bird. <laughs> Not the minor bird, the mana bird. <laughs> so two liters for each member of his household. The Israelites did this, some gathering more, others less. When they measured it, those who gathered much did not have too much. 
and those who gathered less did not have too little. Okay, I'm going to ask you, how did that happen? Were the angels there going... <laughs> or did some of it evaporate? Each had that, gathered... That, that wouldn't give some... The people had less, more. Each had gathered just what he needed. Moses said to them, No one is to keep any of it for tomorrow. But some of them did not listen to Moses and saved part of it. The next morning it was full of worms and smelled rotten. And Moses was angry with them. Every morning each one gathered as much as he needed. And when the sun grew hot, what was left on the ground melted. On the sixth day, they gathered twice as you, much. You, you skipped my added comment there. I was waiting for you to add it. <laughs> <laughs> God made no provisions for leftovers. Ladies, think about that. Some of you who maybe have several members in your family and there's perpetual leftovers. Go ahead. Leftovers uh, have a tendency to spoil. This spoiled by the next day. Yes. On the sixth day, they gathered twice as much food, four leaders for each person. All the leaders of the community came and told Moses about it. And he said to them, the Lord has commanded that tomorrow is a holy day of rest dedicated to him. Now, do you suppose that as they're out there gathering, some of them said, hold on, only two leaders. That was the rule, only two leaders. Don't you suspect that uh, Moses told them, warned them about this? Probably. Bake today, continuing, bake today what you have, what you want to bake, and boil what you want to boil. Whatever is left should be put aside and kept for tomorrow. As Moses had commanded, they kept what was left until the next day. It did not spoil or get worms in it. Moses said, eat this today, because today is the Sabbath, the day of rest dedicated to the Lord, and you will not find any food outside the camp. You must gather food for six days, but on the seventh day, the day of rest, there will be none. On the seventh day, some of the people went out to gather food, but they did not find any. Then the Lord said to Moses, How much longer will you people refuse to obey my commands? Remember that I, the Lord, have given you a day of rest, and that is why on the sixth day I will always give you enough food for two days. Everyone is to stay where he is on the seventh day and not leave his home. So the people did not, so the people did no work on the seventh day. The people of Israel called the food manna. It was like small white seed and tasted like biscuits made with honey. Okay, biscuits. What's another word for biscuits? What are the, what are the, where do the, what word do, what do the British, what kind of things do they describe as biscuits? Crackers, roll scones. Huh? What we call crackers here would be sometimes a biscuit or cookies. Yes, yeah. Made with honey. Sucks. I don't know. This sounds like a pretty fancy diet. Did every single person, even the children, gather enough for their own needs? Did the children eat as they as they gathered, as we do when we are picking fruit? I can remember many times in my childhood where we went off to pick this or that. Maybe it was cherries or pears or peaches or apples or, or apricots or whatever, or even out into the wild searching for, for huckleberries or blueberries and so forth. And what do you do when you're out there picking those kinds of things? Mm -hmm. Is that what they did here? What kind of containers did they use? to hold the manna? How did God arrange for each person to have exactly the right amount so that she he needed, ev need, needed even though some got gathered more and some less? That was the question we posed a little earlier. This experience recorded by Moses is proof that the Sabbath existed even before the giving of the Ten Commandments. Furthermore, with the giving of the Ten Commandments at Mount Sinai, they were told to Here's your famous word, remember. remember. This suggests that they were already aware of the truth about the Sabbath. What lessons should they have learned from the manna? 
think about it, a fresh supply of food every day of the week except Sabbath. Sabbath. But if any was left over on any day except Friday, it got rotten and developed worms. On Friday, a double portion was collected and remained fresh to be eaten earlier, I'm sorry, to be eaten either on Friday or on the Sabbath. Thus, every week the children of Israel were reminded of God's command to keep the Sabbath holy. But God was prepared to give them even more reasons for celebrating the Sabbath. And here we have Deuteronomy 5, verses 5 through 22. Moses recounted to Israel, remember that Deuteronomy consists of three fairly lengthy sermons that Moses preached to the children of Israel, and this is one of them. So he's preaching to them, quote, the Lord said, I am the Lord your God who rescued you from Egypt where you were slaves. And he's recounting their experiences of the past. Worship no God but me. Do not make for yourselves images of anything in heaven or on earth or in the water under the earth. Do not bow down to any idol or worship it, for I am the Lord your God, and I tolerate no rivals. Do you wish that the Exodus version had said that? I bring punishment on those who hate me and on their descendants down to the third and fourth generation. But I show my love to thousands of generations of those who love me and obey my laws. Do not use my name for evil purposes, for I, the Lord, your God, will punish anyone who misuses my name. Observe the Sabbath and keep it holy, as I, the Lord, your God, have commanded you. You have six days in which to do your work, but the seventh day is a day of rest dedicated to me. On that day, no one is to work, neither you, your children, your slaves, your animals, nor the foreigners who live in your country. Your slaves must rest just as you do. Remember that you were slaves in Egypt and that I, the Lord your God, rescued you by my great power and strength. That is why I command you to observe the Sabbath. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on. There's none of that in the Exodus version. Where did this come from? It's another reason. Well, respect your father and your mother as I, the Lord your God, command you so that all may go well with you and so that you may live a long time in the land that I'm giving you. Do not commit murder. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not accuse anyone falsely. Do not desire anyone, another man's wife. Do not desire his house, his land, his slaves, his cattle, his donkeys, or anything else that he owns. These are the commandments the Lord gave to all of you when you were gathered to the mountain. Hold on. Wait. We always go to the Exodus 20 version. Why, why not? This one. When he spoke with a mighty voice from the fire and from the thick clouds, he gave these commandments and no others. Then he wrote them on two stone tablets and gave them to me. Hmm. So which version of the Ten Commandments is the authentic one? Both are. Both are. God is now giving additional reasons to celebrate the Sabbath. Well, after 40 years, this new generation was finally prepared to enter the Promised Land. But just before Moses left them, he gave them those three lengthy sermons as recorded in Deuteronomy. Of all the people over the age of 20, who had left Egypt, only Caleb and Joshua entered the land of Canaan. Only Caleb and Joshua. What distinguished those two? They were the faithful ones. Uh, this is, uh, when they were sent as, as spies, they're the only ones who says, this can be done. The with other, God's help. With God's help, right, of course. And they came back with bunch of grapes and fruits, da, da, da. but again, with and God's if, help. If you happen to travel to Israel, you will discover on all the tourist sites the, the symbol for tour, the tourist ministry in Israel is two men with a stick and a bunch of grapes. <laughs> Isn't that nice? Yeah. So, what did the new generation think about what had happened to all their ancestors? Did they think that God had killed their parents? Now by this time, the oldest of them were 60 years old. So they would, they would seem to be fairly mature. Well, have that potential 
obviously they weren't very mature in their yeah. in their act. Most of them weren't very mature in their actions and thoughts. What does the Sabbath remind you of as you celebrate from week to week? Do you review in your mind the lessons God has intended for us to learn? God's plan for his children never ends. This brief great controversy, I'm going to call it, with Satan and sin will soon be over. Then God can continue with his plans for his universe. And he wants each one of us, you, me, each one of us, to be a part of that future plan. After the children of Israel had conquered Og and, Bash and Sihon, the two Amorite kings and their people, they turned southward and camped on the plain of the Jordan River across from Jericho. I don't know how it was when you were growing up or when you first started studying about these things, but, you know, I always just assumed that they traveled out there and they wandered around the Sinai Peninsula for, Peninsula for a while, and then they advanced into the land. No. They went all the way around the land of Canaan. And they approached from the southwest and finally attacked from the northeast. And they kept asking those nations over there, just let us pass through. We won't, we won't bother you. Whatever. No, no. Okay, well. Interesting. That's because they had disobeyed mm -hmm. God early and... Uh, the Canaanites had figured out, hey, these people are helpless. Yeah. We, can, we under, can defeat them. Under certain circumstances. Yeah. So Unless their God is with what, them. What is a normal travel time from Egypt to Jordan? What, what it was in those days with walking on foot or by horseback or something like that? A couple weeks. About two weeks. Think about it. Now they've been wandering 40 years. Well, they turned southward and camped on the plain of the Jordan River across from Jericho. And they have now gotten into a place where there's, they, there's no room for them to go further south. They run into the Dead Sea. So here they are, camped on the, across, on the plain. The, the Jordan River is probably flooding at that time of the year. So they've got a flooded river between them. And who, what's on the other side of the river? Is it Jericho or what? Jericho, yep. During their time there, Moses wrote his sermons and presented them to the people. He was busy, but things were going on that he was not aware of at first. It was at that time that the Moabite and Midianite women showed up and led many of the Jewish men into idolatry and fertility cult worship practices. I mean, they're ready to enter the land of Canaan. <clears throat> As a result, 24,000 of the people of Israel died on the very banks of the Jordan River. Look at Numbers 25 if you want to know about that story. <laughs> well, go ahead. These were Moabites were their cousins. Yes. <laughs> and Midianites. And Midianites, right. Yep. Right. Cousins a few times removed. Yes. Really? Yes. Yeah, but... Hmm. Well, let's review for a moment the differences between Exodus 28 and 11 and Deuteronomy 5, 12 to 15. Had Moses forgotten what he had written in Exodus when he wrote the Deuteronomy 5? What does the end of Deuteronomy tell us about his mental capacities? He was very sharp. He was very, very sharp. Not, not even his eyesight was dimmed. So why, are the, why these differences? Why is it that instead of mentioning God's creation back in the beginning, he said, Jim, what did he say here in Deuteronomy? Remember that you were slaves in Egypt and that I, the Lord, your God, re rescued you by my great power and strength. That is why I command you to observe the Sabbath, Deuteronomy 5, 5 verse 15, Good News Bible. That is why I command you to observe the Sabbath. So if we're a Gentile, not a Jew, does that leave us out? Well, this was not a failure on Moses' memory. Moses was, in fact, adding more reasons for keeping the Sabbath. Not only were the children of Israel to celebrate God's creation in the beginning, 
but also they were to celebrate their deliverance from Egyptian slavery, their recreation or redemption. So now we see that God is not only asking us to celebrate creation, but also redemption. And the redemption from Egypt was more clearly present in their minds than the distant creation. Thus it was important for them to associate God's work with both of those events. So if you were to describe the most important events in the history of our world, the religious world, the children of Israel, the Bible, and so forth, what are the three or four most important events that happen in the Bible? Creation. Creation. The flood. The flood. Exodus. Exodus. Messiah. Big time, yeah. yes. The second coming. Mm -hmm. yeah. Heaven ones we know about. And every one of them, with a possible exception of the flood, was connected with the Sabbath. Okay. Do we ever experience the freedom from sin that God intends for us to experience? Do we recognize that each Sabbath is to point us back to our Savior and friend? Look at these words from John 1, 1 through 14. In the beginning, the Word already existed. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. From the very beginning, the Word was with God. Through Him, God made all things. Not one thing in all creation was made without Him. Hmm. The Word was the source of life, and this life brought light to humanity. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness was never, has never put it out. God sent his messenger, a man named John, who came to tell people about the light so that all should hear the message and believe. He himself was not the light. He came to tell about the light. This was the real light, the light that comes into the world and shines on everybody. The word was in the world, and though God made the world through him, yet the world did not recognize him. He came to his own country, but his own people did not receive him. Let's interrupt there for a second. That's one of the saddest verses in the whole Bible. He came to his own. Literally, it says, he came to his own, and the, the neuter is, 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 is it's, the gender is neutral. Neuro, uh, yeah, neuter. And then he says, but his own people this now talking about the same word exactly, but it's using masculine, did not receive him. So he came to his things, but his people did not receive him. How sad. Okay? Some, however, did receive him and believed in him. So he gave them the right to become God's children. They did not become God's children by natural means, that is, by being born as the children of a human father. God himself was their father. The Word became a human being and, full of grace and truth, lived among us. We saw his glory, the glory which he received as the Father's only Son. That's from the Good News Bible. Wow. So why do you suppose God commands us to keep the Sabbath? Wouldn't it have been more friendly and more in keeping with the freedom, Jim, that God promotes just to ask us simply to keep a Sabbath? Why would he command us to keep it? Well, that word that is many times translated as command could be translated as a prescription. Mm -hmm. Prescription as to how to live. And uh, rather than command, so it's, it's just another, yeah. uh, maybe a little softer, but it's just as important. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's, that's another take on it. But there it is, the Sabbath command in the Ten Commandments, a command to keep the Sabbath, just as he commands avoiding murder and theft. So which do you think is more serious, murder, theft? or Sabbath-breaking. Well, but God's compl complaint all through the Old Testament is you don't listen. Mm -hmm. And God is a teacher, as a parent, the duty of the parent is to teach the kids. If the kids don't listen, what can they do? They, they have a t God uh, have a temper tantrum? I mean, it, uh, <laughs> that wouldn't Ultimately, Romans 1 is let you go. Yeah. That's, real, uh, that's love. 
is cannot help it but make a little side comment. The Quran, the Islamic book of faith, mentions keeping the Sabbath in seven different places. Mm -hmm. hmm. It also mentions, I cannot help it, but bring us back to John chapter 1, verse 14. It calls Jesus the Word. Yeah. And what is the Word? It's a means of communication. Yep. He, he communicates via words. And he asks you, choose you this day who you're going to serve. That's who, who you can listen to. The Creator? Uh, well, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was made flesh, you right. see. Yeah. By the Word of the uh, Lord, the heavens were made, I think, Psalms yeah. 33, 6 and 9. Psalm 33, yeah. yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. There are many passages in Scripture celebrating the Sabbath. There's an entire Sabbath song found in Psalm 92. But consider these words. Charles? Yes, sir. Isaiah 58, 13 and 14, the Lord says, if you treat the Sabbath as sacred and do not pursue your own interests on that day, if you value my holy day and honor it by not traveling, ha, huh, not traveling, working or eating in a restaurant. No, it does not say that. If you <laughs> <laughs> and honor it by not traveling, working, or talking idly on that day, then you will find the joy that comes from serving me. I will make, your, make you honored above over all the world, and you will enjoy the land I gave to your ancestor Jacob. I, the Lord, have spoken. It's well, interesting that it says Jacob instead of mostly we think of Abraham. Mm -hmm. But Sabbath keeping does not begin at sundown or Friday. Every day of the week should be a time for us to think about how we can prepare for the most important day of the week. Charles, let me ask you this. In Swahili, the language I learned to speak in East Africa, you number the days of the week, the first day, the second day, the third day, da 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 da, the preparation day, and then do you do you do that in uh, in, in in India, South Asia? You say that one more time. The well, do, are the are the days days numbered to to? to point to the, the, the culmination at the last. I mean, the actual name of the day. First day, day of one, the Sabbath, second day of the Sabbath. As it is in the, in the Bible. I just wonder how much of that is still left in any modern languages. No, no, but then the Spanish, of course, goes to Sabado, the yeah. rest, but yeah. then, no. I, okay, okay. But in, in Swahili it does, huh? Mm-hmm. Wow. Juma mosi, juma pili, juma tatu. Juma, juma, okay. That's the word, mm -hmm. okay. Day. Day. Day one, day two, day three. Right, right, right. Okay. Every day of the week should be a time for us to think about how we can prepare for the most important day of the week. Furthermore, when Friday comes, it is known as what? Preparation day. Gordon? Mark fifteen forty two. It was preparation day. That is the day before the Sabbath from Good News Bible. What are we supposed to do on the Sabbath? One of the important things we should do on the Sabbath is to celebrate fellowship with family members. You want to go ahead and take that one as well, Gordon? Luke, pardon me, Leviticus 19.3. So the Lord said to Moses to say to the people, to the Israelites, each of you must respect his mother and his father and must keep the Sabbath as I have commanded. I am the Lord your God. Good News Bible. So does that mean you invite them over to your house for Sabbath lunch? What does it mean to respect your father and your mother? But we should not forget that like Jesus, we need to be involved in corporate worship with fellow believers. Leviticus 23 verse 3 says, you have six days in which to do your work. But remember that the seventh day, the Sabbath, is a day of rest. On that day, do not work, but gather for worship. The Sabbath belongs to the Lord no matter where you, are, you live. And that was a challenge in, in ancient times because many of the people who lived in ancient times actually believed that different gods were assigned to different territories. 
And the children of Israel, many of them weren't absolutely sure that if they were taken prisoner to Nineveh or to Babylon or something, that God would even be able to hear their prayers over there. Now, we think that's sort of foolish. We know that God can hear prayers anywhere. But that was a major concern in their day. Then Jesus, Luke 4, 16, Then Jesus went to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and on the Sabbath he went as usual to the synagogue. He stood up to read the scriptures. Ellen White says that he had done a marvelous job of standing up and reading the scriptures even when he was quite young, and that's probably why they asked him, one of the reasons why they asked him to do that. Hebrews 10.25, let us not give up the habit of meeting together as some are doing. Instead, let us encourage one another all the more since we see that the day of the Lord is coming nearer. So how do you regard the Sabbath? Do you look forward to the Sabbath as a great time of rest and not just for sleeping? But in our day, there are so serious questions that are being raised about the Sabbath. How do you feel about these questions? Jim, you want to take on a couple of those? Some Christians, including even some Seventh-day Adventists, consider theistic evolution a viable explanation of creation. How does the Sabbath show theistic evolution and Seventh-day Adventism to be incompatible? What pure purpose, excuse me, what purpose is there in keeping the Seventh-day Sabbath holy in commemoration of billions of years, especially when the Word of God is explicit about its being made holy after the first six days of creation. It's an interesting point. Uh, what do the, those who believe in theistic evolution say about why we should keep the Sabbath? Oh, God wants us to worship Him once in a while. He, he's, God needs, needs your worship, which is, I just said something that's not true. God is in need of nothing, otherwise He wouldn't be God. Yeah. Okay. What do you say to the argument that the day doesn't matter just as long as we have one day of rest a week. Or, on the other hand, how do we respond to the claim that Jesus is our Sabbath rest? And therefore, there is no need to keep any day as a day of rest. How can we keep the Sabbath holy by the reminder of freedom? Excuse me. How can keeping the Sabbath holy be a reminder of freedom and liberation? How can we avoid making it restrictive and legalistic? Some claim that keeping the Seventh-day Sabbath is an attempt to work our way to heaven. That is the logic, however... What, in, what is the logic? What is the logic, however, in claiming that by rest on the Seventh-day Sabbath, excuse me, the Sabbath day, we are trying to work our way to heaven, adult yeah. Sabbath school, quarterly... You, you, you work your way to heaven by resting? Yeah, it's... <laughs> Oh, that, let's see, I wonder how we could work that out. <laughs> I know a lot of people would be very happy to work by resting. Yeah. I know a lot of people who do work by resting. <laughs> That's also true. As a Seventh-day Sabbath-keeping Adventist, what has the keeping of the Sabbath done for you? Does it help you to avoid idolatry, atheism, or infidelity? The Sabbath is a kind of oasis in time. Well, someone who is uh, 70 years old, 70, has had 10 years solid of Sabbath. Yeah. One could earn probably a couple of PhDs. <laughs> so really, the question is, uh, what does Sabbath mean to us? How yeah. have those 10 years meant yeah. to us? Well, famous scientists, even modern scientists, have been amazed as they have studied the details of God's created creation. Frank Borman, among the first humans to actually look down on the earth from 250,000 miles away, said, quoting Genesis 1-1 in the New King James Bible, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Charles, you want to carry on there? Um. As he later explained? Yes. As he later explained, I had an enormous feeling that there had to be a power greater than any of, of, of us, that there was a God, that there was indeed a beginning. Adult Sabbath School class, uh, school 
Bible study guide, 115, okay. 19 page. Many great scientists down through the generations have firmly believed that God was the creator of our universe. Men like Copernicus, Isaac Newton, and the Blaise Pascal were faithful believers in the creation story. Since 1945, people on the earth have been aware of the incredible power of nuclear explosions. When men, and we, we happen to know personally a good friend who was a young girl in that explosion and lost all her hair. Now think about what happened in Japan, of course, we're talking about. Now think about what happened when God created the universe. That energy somehow came from him and somehow was condensed into that matter that is all that energy stored in it. And there's the verse, Psalm 33, 6 and 9, the Lord created the heavens and the, by his command, the sun and moon stood by his spoken word and so forth. We cannot, and I'm gonna to try to get this in here, we cannot even begin to comprehend God's unlimited power. To get just a small idea of how unlimited God's power is, let's, can just, let's consider just one object in the heavens, the sun. Did God create the sun? Certainly. Genesis 1, 14 to 16 tells the story of God's creating two lights to rule the heavens, the sun to rule the day and the moon to rule the night. We exist on one of the planets that revolve around the sun. The sun produces more energy in one second than humans have produced in all their history. Take all the electrical power and all the energy produced by solar or coal or gas since the beginning of time, and the sun produces more in one second. The sun has a diameter of approximately 860,000 miles and could hold a million planets the size of this earth. So you just pour them in there. But the sun is just one of at least 100 billion stars in our galaxy. The Milky Way, that's just one, to one tiny galaxy. One star called the Pistol Star gives off 10 million times the power generated by our sun. One million stars the size of our sun could easily fit within the sphere of the Pistol Star. Are we, are we starting to get the impact here? Some scientists estimate that there are 10 billion trillion stars in the universe. Someone has said that there are about the same number of stars as there are grains of sand on the seashore. Do you think, that's from our Bible study guide, do you think God, the God, think of God every Sabbath and to praise his name? And we're running out of time, let me just conclude there. What do you think of on the Sabbath? Let's pray. Our kind and wonderful Father, We've come together to think about the Sabbath and all of its implications. We as Seventh-day Adventists have held tightly to our beliefs about the Sabbath and believe that it should be a great part of our worship service and, and dedication to you. Help us now to remember what we have studied and may help it to, to more fully and completely uh, educate our minds to the the position that you hold or should hold in our lives is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm -hmm.